Session. That the requests of broadcasting and recording services, members and visitors in the public gallery are requested to ensure that for the duration of the meeting, their mobile phones are turned off completely or switched to airplane safe or flight mode, depending on their device. It's not sufficient to just put your phones in silent mode, as this will maintain a level of interference in the broadcasting system. Item six on the agenda today is detailed scrutiny of the Local Government Water Pollution Amendment Bill 2018. I would like to welcome to today's meeting Deputy Martin Kenny. Before we begin, just a note on privilege. I wish to draw your attention to the fact that by virtue of Section 172I of the Defamation, Defamation Act 2009, witness Witnesses are protected by absolute privilege in respect of their evidence given to this committee. However, if you are directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter, and you continue to so do, you are entitled thereafter only to a qualified privilege in respect of your evidence. You are directed that only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given, and you are asked to respect the parliamentary practice to the effect that, where possible, you should not criticise nor make charges against any person, persons or entity by name, or in such a way to make him, her or it identifiable. Members are reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice to the effect that they should not comment on, criticise or make charges against a person outside the Houses or an official either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. I would now like to call on Deputy Kenny to make his opening statement. Thank you very much, Cahirla, and I'm very glad to be here this morning to um, uh, present this bill for the, the detailed scrutiny. Um, first of all, when I got elected, I promised the people of my constituency to address their needs in the Oireachtas. Uh, the issue of depopulation, decreasing population in the North West is a long-term and insidious blight on our own county of Leitrim and in other parts of the region as well. There are many reasons for this. We need jobs, we need infrastructure, we need transport, but we also need to fight to keep what we already have and to hold what we have. This bill is designed to tackle a situation where young families who want to stay in rural Ireland but who cannot get planning permission to build their homes there. The problem lies in the nature of soil in the parts of the region and in parts of the southwest and in other parts of the country. But particularly, it's particularly bad in Leitrim and in West Cavan and in areas like that where we have very dense soil. In these areas, the present code of practice from the Environment Protection Agency has virtu virtually halted construction of one-off dwellings in areas with heavy soil. The nature of the soil means the standard T test, the percolation test, will not be passed. Therefore, there must be a zero discharge according to the EPA code of practice, no matter how efficient the wastewater systems are. The achievement of zero discharge is impossible in these areas and particularly in the climate that we have. But it is possible in this day and age to install a system which will mean that the wastewater produced will be to a bathing water standard. This amendment to the Local Government Water Pollution Act 1977 will allow the Minister to design and regulate a discharge licence which would be issued by local authorities for one-off houses where the percolation test fails. The Government has acknowledged that rural Ireland needs rehabilitation after years of neglect and austerity. In my own area, I can instance dozens of young families who, who, for the refusal of planning permission, have not been able to settle in their home place where they want to live for the rest of their lives. If discharge licences of this nature were granted in an appropriate and proportionate way, there is no danger to the environment from this amendment. I truly believe that it is a good move for rural Ireland, and I propose this amendment in that spirit. Uh, just to, 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 to briefly, if you like, talk about where this came from and how we come to this situation. Um, for many years in Leitrim, we've had this problem. We've had a problem particularly of very dense soil and of being able to get planning permission in those circumstances, even before the new EPA guidelines. Uh, and throughout much of that time, the, the uh, Council has, has tried to develop alternative ways of doing it. And for many, many years, probably for the past 20 years, almost all places where planning permission was been sought, they had to use uh, mechanical treatment systems. And usually they had to go to a percolation area which would be of imported topsoil or a raised percolation. So the, this type of situation is something that the Council was trying to deal with long before the more stringent, uh, if you like, code of practice came in. Now, one of the things that a lot of people in, in rural areas would be conscious of is that there is this mindset a sort of that uh, it's almost like someone described it to me as like an animal farm type mind mindset you know all two legs bad and all four legs good that all houses that are in clusters are good and all houses that are on their own are bad and, and I think that kind of mindset doesn't recognize the reality of the world we live in and, and, and is, is a closed mindset and we need to open that up there are hundreds of parishes around the country where there are no towns 
whether it's just people living in isolated rural communities. My own parish in, in Ahavas and County Leitrim is similar to that. There's about 600 people living scattered in houses around the countryside. There's no town, there's no village. Yet we have a small three-teacher school which for the last 10 years there's been practically no new houses built in the community and there are at least a dozen families, a dozen young people who would like to come and live in the area but they can't get planning permission to do so. And that school is now going to be a two-teacher school next September and probably within the next 10 years we'll see that school close. It's similar in another parish beside me in Drum Riley, it's similar in Gortletzer, the other parish on the other side of me. And that's all over small rural areas in County Leitrim. Uh, people say can't they go and live in the town. The nearest town is seven or eight miles away. You know, people, people who live in the rural community live in the rural community and that's where they want to live. My own house, when you turn off the main road, I'm the first house on the left hand side down the, the L1511 but I'm two kilometres down that road. So there's two kilometres of space between me and the main road. There's another couple of hundred metres to the next house. We're not talking about houses on top of each other. We're not talking about situations where you've got cluster developments or where you've got ribbon development or where you've got overdevelopment at all. We're not talking about that kind of situation. Uh, and of course, where that situation happens, appropriate planning needs to come into place for it. The, the, the issue going back to, to what has happened in the past on the EPA guidelines, what Leitrim County Council done and other councils done where they had these kind of, of, of problems with heavy soils in the past is they developed other means of doing it. And I, I've come across many situations in West Cavan and Leitrim where people got planning permission where they put in reed bed systems for to deal with the effluent, which was, if you like, a, na a natural way of doing that. There is also, of course, uh, willow beds as well, where willow trees are planted. And as the sewage comes in through them from the septic tank, the evaporation from the willows soaks up and, and deals with all the nutrients in it and is, is a very effective way of dealing with that situation. Um, there is also, of course, mechanical treatment systems that have been used an awful lot and most of them do an excellent job as well. Uh, to, to, to come to, the, to, the, to the, the situation that we have in the new EPA guidelines, when they came in, I was on Leitrim County Council and we found this situation where practically nobody in most rural areas in Leitrim were going to get planning and I think it was, um, I think it was actually Senator Pascal Mooney that organised a trip up here to Leinster House and we met people from the EPA at that time and from, and from the department and they said to us, look, this was an unintended consequence. We never thought of a situation where we'd have this happen. However, we have it there now, we'll try and come up with a solution. And since then, Leitrim County Council and other councils around the country and the EPA have looked at how they can achieve zero discharge, how this can be done. And they've done studies into it. And one of those studies was a research paper which was done, report number 161, uh, by Lawrence Gill. And that research paper goes through what and how these systems were looked at and examined. Uh, I, I've actually done a copy of the main parts of it. I'll give it to the members afterwards. But just to go through a couple of things in that. First of all, uh, the evaporation, it's, it's a longer word, it's evap evapotranspiration systems, or ET systems for short, is, is what they call them. And those systems are where, when a septic tank goes in, the percolation area from that becomes, if you like, a shallow bed, where there's a, a large area dug out in the garden, where there's a, an impermeable plastic layer put into it and then it's filled back with the soil and the reeds or the, sorry, the willows are planted in that then and they're given a year to start to grow before the actual effluent comes in and goes into the bottom of that system. They work extremely well. In fact, in the, in the system, they, they, they show that, that the, uh, the evaporation from them, and it's, it's in the conclusions of it, that the system using willow trees are unlikely to act as a zero discharge system. And that's the problem we've got here, is the zero discharge. But the question I ask is, why does zero discharge the issue? The zero discharge was put in place to achieve zero effect. That's what we want to do. We want to get a zero effect, that it will not have any impact on the environment. The system that has been developed by the, by the ET system, and it states in, also in the conclusion of the report, that uh, it, does propor it does promote excellent pollutant attenuation and they significantly reduce the net discharge to the environment and so should be considered as a viable passive treatment. The conclusion also states this would require a change to the current consent procedures to allow for such a controlled discharge to surface water. So in other words, the conclusion of the report done by the EPA states that the Willow ET system 
produces an effluent which is of similar quality to the effluent that comes from a system that has no sewage discharge going into it. So they found that it had zero effect. And if it had zero effect, the point they would raise is that we then need to look at why we have a zero discharge rule. So it is in that context that I presented uh, this bill. In fairness, Leitrim County Council have also done more work on the ET system since then and are continuing to do that work and have a pilot scheme in place where they're looking at uh, minimising the amount of rainfall that was going into the system because they found that they could achieve zero discharge for most of the year but only in the winter time when you had heavy rainfall and it was really the rain that was going out the other side of it rather than any pollutant effluent. So they're talking about building the, the, um, the willow beds and sloping it off so that as little rain as possible gets into it to try and achieve zero discharge. My argument is, and I think it's a logical argument, that if we have zero effect, we have the same impact as zero discharge. If you take water from the river and you put it in a 40-gallon barrel and you kept it until night and you put it back into the river again, it's having a zero effect on it. And that's exactly what this does. It has a zero effect. So um, the bill, and, and I know there has been um, some issues raised by the department in regard to the bill, and I, I, I went through that and, and, and looked at it, and one of the issues that has been raised about the bill is that it would appear that it would, that it would suggest that the local authority must issue a licence under Section 4. Now, I went through the bill and I can't find the word must anywhere in it. What the bill states is that notwithstanding the generality of the foregoing, nothing in this section shall prevent the water system services from issuing a licence. So there's nothing to prevent, it doesn't mean you must. Similarly, it says that the, the Minister shall introduce regulations to provide for the application for a wastewater treatment system. So he shall introduce regulations to do it, but he still isn't insisting that it must happen. It only happens when the, the person or the individual or the, 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 um, the agent usually applies for a licence and they, they meet the standards required for that licence. The bill also states that the Minister may introduce such regulations as necessary, incidental or supplementary or consequential for the purpose of giving effect to this section. So in other words, going back to the, the, the Local Government Water Pollution Act of 1977, that this additional uh, section in it, section 13 at the end of it, would do nothing to affect any of the other sections and none of the other sections would affect it either. Basically, what we're talking about here is that the present system of issuing a discharge licence, which is in place for a situation where you have a large number of houses or where you have, a, where you have a, an industrial type unit, that that would be a particular type of licence for that, and that's fine. But what I'm saying is that there also needs to be provision made for a different type of licence which suits for a single house in a situation where you have a system in place which will have zero effect and allow for the minimum num amount of discharge. That's what we want to try and achieve. I know that uh, others, including the EPA, including many of the local authorities, are working in a similar vein to try and achieve that. But the one little obstacle we have in the way is this issue of zero discharge. Now, if we wanted to, we could try and go back and change the code of practice. But changing the code of practice is a difficult thing to do, and I understand that because it has been lodged with the European Commission. So, but the code of practice states that if you fail to uh, pass the T-test, you have zero discharge or you have a discharge licence. What I'm doing is putting in, fact, in effect a means of having a small discharge licence in order to deal with that in an appropriate way where all other planning requirements are already met. And then you look at how you can achieve a zero impact on the environment and that can be achieved by the type of ET system which has been developed by the local authorities in cooperation with the EPA already. So I, I leave it at that and I'll take any questions that you have. Thank you. Um, any members wishing to... <coughs> I'm, you, I'm, yeah, okay. you know, I, I, I'm here really to support the bill or to support some system or put in some system in place where people, and I know Leitrim has mentioned as well, but there are areas in counties like Wankhaven and other, other counties where uh, areas are dying really and surely, as Martin said, in schools and football clubs, all that, where people, rural people from certain areas cannot get planning because of this situation. And 
you know, we, we should, in all sincerity, try to, to bring in a system where, this, where people can be allowed to live in their own areas, where you have farming communities uh, <coughs> and farmers, young farmers taking over family farms and all that type of thing, that they cannot build on their own land. And I think what Martin is proposing is reasonable. What he's really trying to do is to, to allow a local authority to issue a discharge licence, providing that there's no pollutant in the discharge. That's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. And I know this is going on for some time. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big issue in, in many, many places. And I think whatever we can do, we should try and do, to try and facilitate, facilitate these families. Not everybody can live in a town or a village. Some people have to live on the land where they farm the land. And it does, it's not suitable to have to move away from there. And it's to keep local, local rural areas alive, quite honestly. That's what we're trying to do here. So I, I wish to just to compliment Martin on his bill and just to say that we will be supporting that bill. <coughs> thank you very much. Well, first, I want to thank uh, Deputy Kenny for coming in and presenting us and, and with the passion he presents it. And as someone who lives in a rural community himself, he clearly knows and understands. And, and, and as uh, Deputy Scanlon said, you know, we, 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 we must encourage and support people who wish and wish to make the choice to live in, in, in rural communities outside the cities and the towns, but in a sustainable way and an environmentally healthy and responsible way. I think that's a key issue. I think that's imp and important. And this is becoming an issue. And I think you make a very strong argument in your, in, in your presentation here today. Uh, I'm aware that Trinity College Dublin, who I worked for myself, in, in its School of Botany, so I, I know something of a lot of its work, both in biomass, in terms of willows and salixes, and now in relation to doing research in relation to this. And there is a pilot scheme, but there's certainly an ongoing body of work uh, uh, by Trinity College in relation to the use of willows uh, and this particular scheme. Uh, you might know something of it. If you do, you might just share, share that some... Is, that is Trinity. Yeah, OK, so all of that is in that. And how is all of that going on, and what is... What, what, stage is all of that at this stage. I'm not familiar with the ins and outs of the work, other than I'm aware that we're doing something on it, because, I mean, th th clearly I think it's good that there is this partnership, and I get a sense that Leitrim County Council are proactively yeah. uh, engaging in this. So you might just share some of that yeah, with well, us. Well, as I said, the, 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 the work that they've done into the, the ET system uh, has been examined for, for a number of years now, and, and one of the, the I suppose objectives they had was to try and achieve a zero discharge. That was the, the logic yeah. that they were trying to go to. And they found that it was practically impossible at, as of yet to get zero discharge, mainly because of rainfall. Rainfall was the issue, not the, the, the effluent going into it. Because a standard house, I think, has somewhere around, somewhere, somewhere less than a thousand litres between water and wastewater and everything going into the system every day, and they found that, that that wouldn't have an impact, that that was being that was being dealt with. But when you take the rainfall as well on top of that, mm. it, it caused the problem. Um, however, what they did say, and I, I, I have it in the, in the, the, um, the actual research paper, they say that um, the, system, the system is acting, were, were acting as excellent pollutant attainants, even if they could not fully achieve a zero discharge system on an annual basis. So they couldn't fully get a zero discharge, mm. but they could achieve a zero impact. And that's the point that I make. That the water that was leaving them, in actual fact, was, was equal to the water that was coming from a system which, which had not been fed any effluent. So the runoff from, we'll say, the concrete yard at the back of the house, if they took samples from that and had took samples from the effluent that went through mm. the ET system, they were equal. There was an equal amount of loadings of phosphorus and, and, and or, you know, that they were well within any standard. In fact, um, there's a, one of those ET systems uh, in a house that I know an old man very well outside of Mohol, near, near Lochrin Castle estate. And uh, I was asking about it. He said, yeah, he said, now and again they come when they take tests. And he got them to call him back. And they said the man that called him back after they'd done the test told him that the water was similar to bathing water standard. Leave it. So the, the, the zero effect is really what we need to achieve. And, and, and all of us want that. Nobody wants to pollute. Nobody wants to destroy your environment. We, 
understand that the water that we have in our rivers and have in our lakes often ends up in our taps because it goes back through the system. Mm. So we want to make sure that we have a zero effect on it. And nature, through the growth of, of willows or through the growth of, of reed beds and all of that type of system, is the best system that has been found for to deal with these situations. So if we're able to, and this is the, this is the key question, I suppose, are we able to do it every time right? Are we able to make sure that we can come up with a system that will work at every site correctly? and that that can be monitored and checked, and that it can be affordable. And that is the research which is now being done. But when that research is done, we come back to the problem at the end of it, that we still have this clause there, which, in fairness to the EPA at the time, said it was an unintended consequence, that zero discharge blocks even that. So even if we had a system which produced water that was potable water that we could drink, and it was only letting out a litre of it a day, because of the rigidity of the system we have at the moment, we're not allowed to discharge that water, okay. which is a ridiculous situation under any context. So, so really what, what we need to do is we need to work with the EPA, uh, with Trinity College, with, with Lawrence Gill and with the others that have done this research and ensure that we can come up with a system. And like I say, everyone that's involved in this process to date are confident that a system can be found which will have zero impact. But it will not have zero discharge. It will have a level of discharge mainly due to rainfall. So once we achieve that, we then come back to the situation that we have the problem that the zero discharge rule is there. And the way to get over the zero discharge rule there is to put a small licence in place which a local authority can issue to the person and will solve that problem. And that's what this bill is intended to do. Now, I'm okay. open, of course, if people in the department have, have particular issues that they'd like to see resolved in that, to see amendments to it. Sensible amendments come from anywhere. None of, none of us are, are, are geniuses in this situation. We all know, you know that there, there may be unintended consequences somewhere that we don't see, and I think we can find a way of overcoming all of those. And that's what we need to work to do. Okay. Can I thank uh, Deputy Kenny for, for, for his presentation here? Just make a few comments myself. Certainly. Coming from a, a rural area myself and having dealt with one off rural housing for the last 15 years is probably is one of the most frustrating processes any family can go through and not alone having to first of all deal with a qualification ruling then having to deal with location and the visual impact that your house might have on the area then dealing with traffic regulations and the increase in traffic regulations on one-off rural houses and now the effluent discharging that you're referring to here today and even in my own county in Wicklow, there is some areas where there's, there's complications, but we seem to be able to get over that by raising the bed and importing a different soil type. You did say, Deputy, that areas in Cabin, I think, with similar heavy soils, yep. did get planning permission for one-off rural housing, but was that based on reed beds or willow beds that they got it? Or yeah. if it was a similar situation, I just wondered how it's, it's, can a local authority in Cavan grant permission? Well, it, it is a similar just situation. Just explain that. It is a similar situation. And, and really, I suppose, what we're talking about here is, in Leitrim in particular, 80% of the soil would be dense. Now, if you ever go to a funeral in County Leitrim and you look into the graveyard, you'll find that when you go down to about six inches, <laughs> you have got good soil. And when you go below that, and that's what what rural people look at, huh? look, it's just daub, it's really heavy soil. And that's what we find in, in a lot of County Leitrim. In West Cavan, you'd have a similar situation. But West Cavan is a lot of mountainous area, and we don't have as many planning applications, but we would have some, and it is equally as difficult for to get planning in some parts of West Cavan. You would have a similar situation in some parts of Sligo as well, and in some parts of Donegal. You'd have similar situations. But in counties where you would have, I suppose, um, a lower percentage of the soil would be that heavy type of soil, people would have more options for to find a part of the land that would have good enough uh, absorption for to be able to build a house. So they could have 40 acres, and there might be only three acres of it that would have that kind of soil, but that's where they'd go and build a house. So that's... That option may not be available in a lot of, in a lot of parts of County Leitrim. Um, also in the past, going back 10, 15 years before these regulations came in, a lot of planning permissions would have been granted in those areas, and they would have used willow beds and would have well used reed beds in parts of Cavan, in parts of Sligo, and other counties around. 
Okay. Would you have, a, and I'll ask maybe Leitrim Council when to make their presentation, but would you have any indication of many plan applications are refused? We have figures here of planner permissions granted. Yeah. Would you have any indication of the number of applications that ref are refused? In other words, what you're really asking is uh, how much of a backlog is there here? Yeah, like yeah. what? what? Yeah. Uh, really, we, we, I, I don't know how many planning applications have been refused, but I do know how many people would actually go and they'd go and meet with, with a planning officer and they'd say, look, I'm thinking about applying for planning, and people are encouraged always to do a pre-planning meeting. And in an awful lot of those pre-planning meetings, they're told, look, you haven't a hope here. And they don't, proceed. And they don't even apply. Okay. And that's the case, I'd say, in 90% of people who will be applying for planning. Now, there are parts of Leitrim that people still get planning where they'd be, if you like, a bit of good land. In different areas, different areas around Manor Hamilton, people get planning permission in some cases. Different areas around Annaduff is a parish where, if, you, if you're going down through Drummond toward Carrick and Shannon, there's a bit of reasonably good land there where an odd person would get planning permission. But it's difficult, even there. But in most of County Leitrim, it is very hard. And as I say, people actually wouldn't go and look for planning because they've been told in the pre planning meeting they haven't a chance. That would have created a backlog. Like I'd say in my own parish at this point, if we had a situation where people could get planning, you'd probably have eight or ten houses that people would like to build. Uh, probably in the whole county, you'd probably, you might have 40 houses. But then that would quickly go back down to probably a, a number of 10 or 12 a year. We're not talking about huge numbers of houses here at all. We're talking about small numbers of houses. But those small numbers of houses are not being built or having a very detrimental impact on the rural community. So part of our environment is our people, and if we, have, if we, if we starve our, our, our rural communities of people, we run into a huge problem. Okay. I'd uh, like to thank Deputy Kenny for attending today and engaging with the committee. Um, sorry there now. I propose we suspend the meeting for a few moments to allow our witness to take their seats. Session. At the request of the broadcast and recording services, members and visitors in the public gallery are requested to ensure that for the duration of the meeting their mobile phones are turned off completely or switched to airplane, safe or flight mode depending on their device. It is not sufficient just to put phones on silent mode as they will maintain a level of interference with the broadcasting system. Item number seven today is detailed scrutiny of local government water pollution amendment bill 2018 and I would like to welcome to today's meeting Mr Joseph Gilhooley, Leitrim County Council, Dr Tom Ryan, Mr Noel Bourne, Mr Dara Page from the Environmental Protection Agency, Mr Fergal O'Colleague, Cogley, O'Quigley, and Mr David Flynn from the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government. And just a note on privilege before we begin. I wish to draw your attention to the fact by virtue of Section 17.2.1 of the Defamation Act 2009, witnesses are protected by absolute privilege in respect of the evidence to this committee. 
However, if you are directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter and you continue to do so, you are entitled thereafter only to qualified privilege, privilege in respect of your evidence. You are directed that the only, only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given and you are asked to respect parliamentary practice to the effect that where possible you should not criticise nor make charges against any person, person or identity by name or in such ways to make him or her or it identifiable. Members are reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice to the effect that they should not comment on, criticise or make charges against a person outside of the House or an official either by name or in such way to make him or her identifiable. I now call on Mr Gilhooly to make his opening statement. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning and to members of the committee. I said, oh, my name is Joseph Gilhooly. I'm direct, uh, Deputy Chief Executive and Director of Service with Leitrim County Council. I have responsibility for economic development planning and infrastructural services with uh, Leitrim County Council. So the background to uh, the process here today is the Water Services Act 2007 places a duty of care on homeowners to ensure that all wastewater treatment systems are kept so as not to cause a human uh, health problem or environment or create a nuisance to others. For new bills, site characterisation must be carried out in accordance with the EPA Code of Practice for Wastewater Treatment and Disposal Systems serving single houses uh, issued in 2009. In regard to this code of practice, particular attention is drawn to the provision that where the tea test in excess of 90, then the site is unsuitable for discharge of treated effluent to the ground. In County Leitrim, as has been set out this morning, the landscape is characterised by drumlands, which contains high clay content. Unfortunately, due to the underlying nature of the subsoils across the majority of the county, estimated 80 87% of the soils, the soil percolation tests fail to meet the acceptable percolation rates required to comply with the EPA Code of Practice, and the sites are deemed unsuitable for discharge of treated wastewater or effluent to the ground. This is proving a significant impediment to the granting of planning permission for individual dwellings in the countryside by Leitrim County Council as the planning authority, and indeed is preventing many prospective applicants making applications since the first instance as agents are aware that the subject sites will be deemed unsuitable once the soil percolation tests are undertaken. The situation is not unique in County Leitrim, as has been referred to. However, no county is affected to the extent as County Leitrim. The number of planning permissions granted for individual houses relying on individual wastewater treatment systems is set out in a table that has been supplied in my statement, ranging from 4 in 2017 to 13 in 2018, and similar figures across the years since 2012, for example. Leitrim is a sparsely populated county, with the 2016 census showing a population of 32,044 persons. The county is highly rural in nature, with the vast majority of the population living in a non-urban environment. This profile of the county represents the history and culture of Leitrim, with a high proportion of small family farms. In the context of this fabric, the imposition of the percolation standards to the 2009 Court of Practice has had, what the Council believes, unintended consequences. These consequences are most acutely felt in the small farm holding scenario, where despite many acres of land being available, the farmer's offspring, son or daughter, may wish to establish their home on the family farm, to continue to farm the land, or to be support to their ageing parents, will fail to secure planning permission. The compounding effect of these restrictions for 10 years now is a contributing factor to the continued depopulation of areas of rural County Leitrim, which will have the corresponding effect on the sustainability of surrounding community and its facilities and services, such as primary schools, etc. In this regard, Leitrim County Council, while maintaining a responsible attitude to the protection of the environment, as is required by law, set about identifying options that could be explored to provide a wastewater treatment solution that would be suitable acceptable and affordable. In addition, the Council at all times maintained a responsible attitude through its County Development Plan in relation to rural planning, with a variety of policies that ensure the appropriate establishment of one-off rural housing in Leitrim, and would not see the restrictions of the Code of Practice as necessary or relevant from a rural planning tool control perspective. The existing EPA Code of Practice is presently under review, with a new document expected to be published in the next couple of months. It is anticipated that the review of the Code of Practice will widen slightly the acceptable parameters of percolation rates and will result in a number of marginal sites in County Leitrim now becoming acceptable for discharge of trade effluent to ground, but as only marginal in nature is felt that the Council must continue to pursue 
the alternative solutions. As referred to, Leitrim County Council has been pursuing innovative solutions to facilitate the design of wastewater treatment and disposal facility that would be suitable in the poor draining soils. Through this process, the Council identified a treatment solution that has the potential to have a zero discharge or near zero discharge of effluent, and if successful, would allow sites with poor uh, percolation characteristics to treat the discharge of, of uh, wastewater in a manner which would not be prejudiced to public health or the protection of the environment. The nature of the wastewater treatment system is a willow-based system constructed within a, soiled, uh, a sealed soil basin. The Council is engaged with Dr Lawrence Gill, a professor in environmental engineering in the School of Engineering in Trinity College Dublin, as academic support to the process. Dr Skill has, has extensive experience in assessing the operation of visual water treatment systems and was co-author of a PPA publication that was referred to earlier by Deputy Kinney. The Willow evapotranspiration system consists of a seal basin that uh, has been refilled with the original soil excavated on the site in order to install an impermeable liner and distribution pipe network which has then been planted with willow cuttings. The system receives wastewater effluent feed to the base of the basin and trees are removed via the evapotranspiration, primarily during the growing season with the willow trees of high water demand but also occurs on a limited basis all year round. Results from the trial systems to date have shown that the system provides excellent pollutant attenuation, greatly reducing organic nutrient and indicator bacteria. Through the most recent design concepts, the level of rainfall into the system could be significantly reduced if not eliminated, thus ensuring minimal if any overflow from the system. Currently, water pollution legislation provides for discharges to ground and surface waters. In regard to the domestic wastewater treatment system, there is an exemption for discharge to ground where the quantity of discharged is less than 5 metres cube per day. However, a discharge to surface waters can only occur under licence from the local authority. As a consequence, a detailed application process is required in order to comply with the legislative requirements. The application process is lengthy and requires significant data collection on the identified receiving waters, such as all year-round flows and assimilation capacity, along with a rigorous monitoring regime thereafter in regard to items such as ongoing sampling analysis, inspection chambers, record keeping and licence renewal processes. The fact that this system of licensing discharge is more designed to deal with matters such as industrial byproducts rather than domestic wastewater treatment systems. A pilot scheme is currently proposed in Eastham to further test the willow system for a zero discharge. That is, that there is no discharge or escape of effluent from the willow, trans, willow plantation basin at any time, based on a more refined design taking learning from the trials to date. However, on the trials to date, the objective of zero discharge for the system has not been fully realised. In addition to that detail earlier in regard to attenuation, what is known is that the willow system does deliver a significantly reduced level of effluent discharge, which is charged only in the winter months. So taking into account the research already available, what is now required is a means disposed of limited resulting discharge proven to be primarily arising from rainfall, if any. The option for this discharge to proceed to surface water, to surface discharge only, given the ground conditions on the subject site preventing discharge to ground. Given the, pro the proved reduced scale of effluent, its proven standard and the fact that discharge arises during the wetter times of the year, then there is a case for the development in the context of the output from these systems of a less rigorous regulatory regime that is both appropriate and proportionate and which would therefore move away from the rigours of the current authorisation process for discharge to surface waters. This reformed regulatory process can be limited to provide only for installations meeting certain design standards based on the experience of the Willis systems to date, for example. The data also available provides the basis for both design guidelines for the system and design parameters for the discharge, particularly in relation to volume, effluent standard and items such as that. Through the work carried out nationally to date, along with the work of Leitrim County Council, there is now an immediate opportunity to address the unintended consequences of the provisions of the Code of Practice of 2009 in relation to sites of low permeability. This opportunity is in regard to the use of the domestic wastewater evapotranspiration treatment system coupled with the, with the requested regulatory reform under the Water Pollution Act 1987. This will provide in instance a clear option for the provision of renewal rural dwelling where the housing need to be accommodated in rural Eitham is of absolute requirement, which in turn could be of general application in areas of the country with similar soil conditions. 
The pilot system in Leithrim will continue to pursue the objective, the objective was ear discharge, which would be the ultimate preferred outcome. Thank you. Uh, Tom, would, uh, would you like to make your presentation? Thank you, Chair. And first of all, I'd like to thank the committee for inviting the Environmental Protection Agency to assist in the detailed scrutiny of the amendment bill. Um, I'm joined by my colleagues from EPA's Office of Environmental Enforcement, Dara Page and Noel Bourne. As the committee will be aware, the EPA is an independent statutory body established under the Environmental Protection Act 1992, and our organisational vision is to protect and improve the environment as a valuable asset for the people of Ireland, and also to protect our people from, uh, and the environment from the harmful effects of radiation and pollution. To that end, the EPA performs a number of functions that are particularly pertinent uh, to the current discussions, including monitoring the quality of the Irish environment and, in particular, the quality of our water courses. We are responsible for the development of the National Inspection Plan for domestic wastewater treatment systems and the coordination and reporting on the implementation of that national plan. And also, we develop and maintain a code of practice on wastewater treatment and disposal systems serving single houses, as has been mentioned by previous speakers. With regard to water quality in Ireland, I would like to highlight a number of troubling findings in recent EPA reports that I think are relevant to our discussions. Water quality in Irish waters has deteriorated with a net overall decline of 3 per cent in good water quality between 2015 and 2017. Long-term loss of high-quality river sites is continuing, with a further 0.6% decline since 2015. And the EPA Groundwater National Monitoring Programme found that 43% of groundwater monitoring wells were contaminated with faecal coliform in 2017. These findings illustrate the vulnerability of our groundwaters, which provide much of our drinking water in rural Ireland, as well as the vulnerability of our surface waters, where we are failing to arrest the continued decline in quality. Uh, these, are, are priorities, these priorities are shared challenges, both in terms of human health protection and environmental protection. The Water Services Act 2007, as amended, and the associated regulations, among other things, provide for inspections of domestic wastewater treatment systems by water service authorities. The EPA is responsible for preparing the National Inspection Plan, which specifies the minimum number of inspections across the country for each local authority area. Inspections are targeted to those areas where there is the greatest potential for improving water quality and improving the protection of human health. The EPA reports regularly on the implementation of the plan and the report for 2017 uh, to 2018 period, due for publication shortly, will show that almost half of the domestic wastewater treatment systems inspected in the reporting period failed the inspection. And that's consistent with previous years and showing persistent problems with these existing systems. Failures are due to system construction defects and systems not being maintained and cleaned properly. Over one quarter of systems are found to be causing a risk to the environment or human health, and almost one third of systems that failed during 20, between the 2013 to 2018 period are still not fixed, with many of those unresolved for more than one year. Domestic wastewater treatment systems are a risk to human health and the environment if they are not constructed and maintained properly. They can contribute to a householder's drinking water well or to the contamination of a householder's drinking water well or their neighbour's well. And in this context, it should be noted that Ireland has the highest rate of VTEC infection in the EU, with over 1,100 cases in 2018. And one possible source of this infection is contaminated drinking water from private wells. The EPA published the current code of practice for wastewater treatment and disposal systems serving single houses in 2009, and the code is referenced throughout the Building Regulations Technical Guidance Document H on drainage and wastewater disposal. 
The purpose of the code is to ensure that domestic wastewater treatment systems are constructed and maintained properly so they do not contaminate groundwater and surface waters and endanger people's health. Essentially, the code sets out how to determine if a site is suitable for the installation of a treatment system and the standards necessary for the construction and maintenance of the system, providing several construction options depending on the site constraints and householder requirements. Now, the current code was published over a decade ago, and EPA is cognizant of the importance of ensuring that national guidelines reflect available and emerging technologies and practices and techniques. To that end, research funded by the EPA, mentioned already, was recently conducted through a collaboration between researchers at Trinity College Dublin, NUI Galway and NUI Maynooth to examine, examine further domestic wastewater treatment options in areas of low permeability soils. This research identified two new technologies, low pressure pipe and drip dispersal systems, which can operate in low perm permeability soils, increasing the percolation limits and hence providing greater flexibility for householders and planners. These new technologies and the associated, associated increase in the percolation limits are incorporated in the draft revised code which was published in December 2018 for three months consultation. During the consultation period, 36 submissions were received containing almost 500 individual comments on the code. And the code revision process is being overseen by a steering committee, which is currently considering the submissions with a view to finalising the revised code by the end of the year. And the steering committee is comprised of representatives of the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government, local authorities, as well as industry and the research community. The code of practice represents the best available technical and scientific knowledge for domestic wastewater treatment systems. For homeowners, it provides the assurance of having their site assessed to a proper standard and that the system chosen will operate satisfactorily in the long term, protecting their health, the health of their neighbours and the environment. And finally, Chair, I'd like to, re to assure the committee that the EPA will continue to work closely with local authorities and government departments and others to assist in the assessment of possible solutions and strategies in this area and to support further research where that's identified with the primary objective of ensuring the protection of people's health and the environment. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you, Tom. Uh, Fergal. Uh, thank, you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to attend the committee today as part of the de detailed scrutiny of the uh, Local Government Water Pollution Amendment Bill 2018. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague uh, David Flynn, uh, Principal Advisor. Um, just by way of preliminary comment, the Department understands and appreciates the intent behind the Private Members Bill, that is to make possible and facilitate the choice of those who wish to live in rural communities outside cities, towns and villages. In the context of that rationale behind the Bill, uh, Minister Damien English last week organised uh, a meeting with Deputy Kenny and a delegation of public representatives, representatives and officials from Leitrim, Leitrim County Council to discuss the particular challenges of providing domestic waste treatment, uh, wastewater treatment systems in Leitrim. Um, as we've heard this morning, Leitrim County Council